welcome this is the rpa champion and in today's video we are going to be doing something a little bit different we are going to be looking at the application modeler but this is not going to be a simple tutorial this is going to be a tips and tricks tutorial i will be sharing my experience of working with blue prism for years and i will be sharing you some really good advice on how to use the application model how you will save some time and also maybe some headaches in debugging with it so let's get started and start by already looking at the application model so i have already created an application modeler integrated with google chrome if you don't know how to do this i made a previous video about it please go check it out so let's launch our application and let's just create another element we will call this element search bar let's spy it all right, so automatically, Blue Prism provides some attributes. Attributes help you identify uh, identify the element that Blue Prism needs to integrate on the page. So, for example, if we click on Highlight, we know that this element uh, can be found by Blue Prism. Now, if I arrange all the attributes that Blue Prism has found, I will notice another something. Often, when you use Blue Prism to spy different things, Blue Prism will match empty fields. Now, it is good practice to uncheck all of these empty fields. Why? Because if the value is empty, it is not matching to anything. Therefore, it will only slow down your application spying if you have many empty attributes that you don't need. Another good practice is that since the least least attributes you need the faster your process can go therefore try avoiding putting too many attributes that is also not too good because if one of them fails you will not be able to spy your element keep that in mind the least attribute you have and they are stable the best so just a quick overview the first attribute this is a blue prism attribute this attribute helps identify Blue Prism, uh, the hierarchy of this element in the page, and this is how it compiles it. Now, if anything changes on the page, if there is another button or another icon or something, this hierarchy is going to change. So this is not going to work. However, if we uncheck all of these and we just leave this, Blue Prism will be still able to find this. Now, if we uncheck this and maybe just leave this, Blue Prism will not be able to find it because it's just looking for a web page with an address of this. It's too generic. If we put input, let's see what happens. So this could be also an input. Therefore, it's wrong again. There is more than one matching field for an input. Therefore, we need to find a combination of different elements that can help us best identify our element. So we can take a look around. But we know that this is the Google page and this is not going to change very often. So this could actually be a good, a good selector. Now, uh, if we order this again, we can see the first three selectors that we have. Uh, another good practice to, uh, to do is to uncheck, usually to uncheck the, uh, the web address. This is usually not very required, especially if there is anything after this web address the uh, the robot will not work again so if we click on highlight it should still be able to identify so this is because i have two tabs open now let's try again perfect and if we uncheck this it should still be able to work yes exactly so as we can see we can only keep the blue prism uh, the blue prism path value and uncheck all of the other values and it will still going to work so again the least of these the least values attribute values that you have the faster your automation is going to go so next uh, what i want to uh, show your attention to is these fields up here so we have it uh, we uh, we have spied an input field Therefore, it would be good practice to change this to what kind of input field we want and also that this is a web element. Now, there is going to be different options here in case Blue Prism doesn't 
recognize them automatically, I suggest you that you uh, match them accordingly. Now, let's take a look at another feature. This feature is the match type. Now, you can customize the values that you want Blue Prism to match on a page. Let's say maybe you have a page that changes constantly or that has a, uh, a structure like, like gallery that continues, that just refreshes as you scroll down, where IDs just increment uh, automatically. So in this case, for example, you would want a dynamic input value. Now, when you set the dynamic input value, you can customize this inside of your data items and provide a value inside of your process to be passed directly in here. You can also use regular expressions and, uh, and obviously wildcards, meaning uh, you could put a wildcard or uh, such as, as an input field and have it, uh, have it select everything that comes after that wildcard. So these are a few general ways of spying different things. Now you can, sp uh, you can spy using different methods and based on the method that you spy, these elements will be different. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now let's create another element. Let's identify this element. And if I cycle through the different uh, spying methods that Blue Prism provides, such as, for example, Windows 32 or auto, uh, user interface mode or region mode. So I will use, for example, the Win32 mode and I will spy the browser. Now, if I go here, as you can see, the attributes have changed. Now, these are the attributes that Blue Prism uses to match with system applications. So based on, uh, we are not going to go into this in detail in this video, we'll have a separate video about this because there's a lot to say about each spying method. But what I want you to be aware is that each spying method has its own attributes. Based on the application that you are in integrating with, that you are spying, uh, Blue Prism is going, or you are going to select the right spying method and based on that, Blue Prism is going to select the right attributes for you to use. Excellent. Uh, the other two ways of spying the application are Open Application Navigator and the User Interface uh, Automation Navigator. We have seen this in a previous video. I really invite you to go check it out. If there is any questions, please ask me in the comments below. I hope this video was informative to you. I uh, really uh, invite you to learn Blue Prism and to practice it uh, by yourself. That is the best way of learning. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day.